guys, it's Nina from VR Focus. I'm here at CES 2018, and I'm joined by... Stuart Nixdorf with uh, Copen and our new ELF VR demo. So, uh, we met at E3 last year, and yeah. you showcased a little bit of what was inside the ELF VR, but now you've actually got it, and you've got it working. Can you tell me a little bit about that process of E3 all the way up into here? Yeah, this was fantastic. Thanks for the time at E3. So, at E3, we were the first disclosing the first working displays, but since then, we've been able to get the entire unit and system working and integrated with Steam VR, with Microsoft, and with Oculus platforms, which is always a lot of work on the back end. Of course, the, the headset itself is fantastic, but getting everything working into a fully functional, compatible system has been uh, what we've been working on the past six months. That's fantastic. I mean, you showcased a little bit of what it can do in the other room, yes. and with regards to most other headsets, it's lighter. Significantly, it's, <laughs> yes. It's smaller in size, and what else does it do? So the one of the, the biggest advantages besides the size and weight is the resolution. So these are dual 2K by 2K, 100 hertz, 120 hertz systems, and so you're able to get rich, film-like, lifelike uh, displays with no fill factor. For your VR customers or trackers on this, it's the fact that you have no uh, screen door effect that makes it feel rich and film-like. You shipped this out to developers last year, right? We, we've, to a few. We have few OEMs, and now we're starting to go out into the developers. Great, and then what are you hoping developers are going to be doing with, with your headset? Making even sexier, well, two things, <laughs> sexier IDs. We're looking for even smaller, lighter industrial designs, but most importantly is leveraging the resolution because to get the resolution in this film-like and the emotional piece of it, like, like they, at E3 it was interesting. We met a lot of other people in L.A. Who are, who are making films, and they're like, we need to get this cinematic reality. We need to get the emotion out, which for a hardware company is hard for us to understand a little bit, but when you see the difference of them trying to capture an emotion on uh, on the screen, right, or excitement on the screen to get that full, rich, high def resolution really comes through with our display. So hopefully, we see more and more high resolution, highly emotional, highly engaging products, both on the film side and on the gaming side. Are you looking to potentially bring this to the consumers anytime soon? Well, we're doing that with partners, right? So in our other suite, we launched another version, a lightweight uh, version with one of our OEM partners with a joint venture that we did. And hopefully we'll be announcing something before this E3. Before this E3. That's really exciting. Um, and besides gaming, so, so, so you mentioned filmmakers. A lot of yes. filmmakers were interested in it. Is yes. It, you mentioned that you're working with China with immersive theater. Yes. And that's sort of a, a completely different area to hardware components. Yes. What does it feel like going into this area of entertainment this sector? I mean, it's interesting because the human factors are always different, right? So gaming wants to be a little more by yourselves or in your groups or highly immersive, highly enclosed, very fast, very high co contrast. You can't see on this much, but how fast everything is moving. And then the, and the filmmakers want to tell a story. And they want to tell a story, but they also want less separation from the environment, right? So here, you know, when you put it in, you feel pretty immersed, but what seems to have changed in the past year is they like a little bit more like ambient light and awareness. Like if you and I were watching two movies together, mm -hmm. we don't want to be completely separated, right? Even though we want to be immersed, but we want to like be a social yeah, element. Yeah, there's a social well. element and an awareness and so so we're making even just changes on the hardware to give you just more kind of peripheral vision that can be used for the users, right? And that's what we're, that's coming through from people who are, who are trying to just make users comfortable with uh, cons watching and consuming the content. Well, I'm really excited to see uh, what developers are going to be doing with it and very excited to see what you're going to be announcing before E3. Excellent. Is there a website that people can go to to find out more about this specific headset? So for this, uh, the best place is our Copen corporate headset. So if you go to Copen, K-O-P-I-N dot com, that's where the information is and you can look for the ELF reference design. And if companies want to use this or want to try it out, is there a possibility for them to try and get access to a headset? There, are, there is access, and so they can reach out to me or the, uh, through the website and kind of get onto our developer list, and, and we'll, we'll follow up with them soon. Fantastic. So, well, okay. thank you very much Thanks for so much. Thanks, thanks, Nina. I appreciate uh, it. Head over to VRFocus.com if you'll find out more about virtual reality, and I will see you there. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.